Moist Critical is not your average internet personality. He's immature. If my soft p fell out of my pants in front of an on-duty police officer, he wouldn't even arrest me. He'd feel too bad about it. He's awkward. Well, that's gotta be a world record. Thanks for the fat tin gift subs, Pikachu. My c is throbbing. Throbbing! What is XQC's chat saying right now? He's completely monotone. I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is my real voice. I'm not pretending to make my voice deep and I'm not using a Darth Vader mic or something. He's not particularly great at games. He wears the same white t-shirt every day of his life. And he's kind of a weirdo. I was an extra in the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. I know, I know, no autographs. I'm just a normal person like all of you. I put my pants on one nipple at a time and wipe my ass crack after a hard sh with both hands. And yet, he's one of the most important important people on the internet. He's the guy every gamer wants to be. He's living the dream, and he did it all by being himself. All right, I'm just gonna speed run YouTube drama today and just rip this shit off like a band-aid and get it over with quickly. Oh. Is that hollow? Tell me it's hollow, Danny. Tell me it's hollow. It is hollow. Oh! I think at this point it's safe to say Activision Blizzard is the most evil video game company ever. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! We're making a unicorn fish. Woohoo! Ooh, baby. 15 years ago, on what was probably just another humid summer day in Tampa, 13-year-old Charlie White uploaded a short video to his new YouTube channel. <laughs> The man who would one day be known as Moist Critical named his channel Penguin Zero. And for years, he mostly uploaded highlight reels of FPS hijinks and generic gameplay videos. To put it simply, his channel looked like every small-time gaming YouTuber's. There didn't seem to be anything special about him. And yet, as Critical turned the new metal down and started talking to his audience in his videos, his channel started growing. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Critical. I'm going to be showing you all the three best Bioshock 2 loadouts for low levels, medium levels, and higher levels. He was just another person amongst thousands uploading gaming content to YouTube. No one even knew what he looked like. So what made him so special. Well, to start, Critical was genuinely hilarious. He had a quick wit, the world's most monotone voice to suit his deadpan humor, and a uh, unique imagination. So I'm not complaining about the spawns, but in reality, I could probably run to Area 51 from my house, find where they're holding ET captive, rub my nipples and run back to my house and still be five seconds away from spawning. Now I know most of you don't like Modern Warfare 2 and neither do I. I personally think this game sucks through a crazy straw. Let's do this. You're done. Well, rub my nipples with sandpaper and beat my wiener with nitroglycerin. Somehow that bitch got me. Critical was building a dedicated fan base of people who loved his weird sense of humor, and he caught the attention of one of the biggest YouTubers of the time, Ray William Johnson. Now this video is at about 100,000 views and it's six minutes long, but if you watch the whole thing, it's hilarious because the guy's humor is so dry. Johnson's recommendation propelled Critical into stardom overnight. His views exploded, but that brought him a new problem, money. With increased viewership came increased ad revenue, and Critical Critical wanted nothing to do with it. As some of you know, I'm not partnered with YouTube or anything else by my own choosing because I do not wish to get any money from doing something I enjoy doing. I make videos entirely for fun, so I do it for free by my own choosing. I think money can corrupt people, and I just really enjoy making videos, so I don't want to receive money from it. But just because he was giving away the money didn't mean he stopped growing. By 2014, Critical hit 1 million subs, and while that should have been an incredible feat, it was tainted. By 2015, Critical was struggling to find a job, which meant he had to break his promise and start taking money earned from his YouTube channel. He was having relationship problems, economic issues, and a crisis of faith. A month ago, I made that video about how I've hit rock bottom and I'm at the lowest point in my life, but I'm trying to be optimistic because my girlfriend broke up with me and I just couldn't find a job, still can't find a job. I want everyone to know my name. I want my name to be remembered. I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered as someone who made a positive impact on the entire world. The only way forward was to dive 
all the way in, to commit to YouTube wholeheartedly, to reveal the real Moist Critical. What's up everybody, it's Critical. Delivering a really high enthusiasm intro for this very special video. In 2017, 10 years after starting his channel, Critical uploaded his first ever video with his face in it. He dove deep into his issues with self-esteem, OCD, and burnout. He put his true self in front of his audience, helping further revitalize his passion for YouTube. He started uploading new videos almost every day on just about anything. Speedruns of games you've never heard of, reviews, more commentary videos, and most importantly, reactions to gaming news and internet drama. As the year went on, more and more of his most hardcore fans realized that hidden underneath Critical's immature, ridiculous persona was a smart and thoughtful commentator, a guy who approached gaming's biggest stories with a level head and a careful perspective. Gamers are very entitled and childish people for the most part. I don't want to say the entire gaming community is, but let's be honest, for the most part they are, because every time something negative in a game gets implemented, the same shit happens. These children send death threats. Let's make our voices be heard. Let them know that we're not satisfied. Let's try and ruin their lives. That'll show them. And it's just, it's disgusting. Moist Critical kept growing. By 2018, he hit 2 million subs and mainstream press were starting to reference him in their coverage of gaming and YouTube. He launched his Twitch channel and was quickly becoming one of the biggest names on the internet. And yet, people were still asking the same question. How did he do it? Moist Critical was the anti-YouTuber. He was just some dude. He didn't really do thumbnails. He didn't get hyped up over everything. He didn't really play the popular games. He didn't even change his clothes. And yet, his growth was unstoppable simply because he was himself. Watching his content is like hanging out with a digital roommate. A friend who will always say the most insane thing they can think of, make you cry with laughter, and then out of nowhere, say something truly brilliant. Two types of men in this world, men who have tried to suck their own c and liars. And Critical wasn't really like any other streamers. The biggest streamers are often incredible at the games they play or constantly courting and generating controversy. Sometimes both. But Critical managed to stay himself and grow despite not being any of that. He found the way to stay moist while quickly becoming a part of the circle of massive Twitch streamers, many of whom respected him because they watched him back in the day. No, I've been friends with Charlie for a while now. I forget when we first chatted. Added, I think it might have been at Pog Champs, uh, and I, I watched him when I was a kid. I mean, we're the same age. I didn't know this, but uh, he was blessed by having a deep voice, and I was cursed with a squeaker voice. By 2020, Moist was making moves on Twitch. He was a part of every meta, from Among Us to React content to opening Pokemon cards. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. That's like a $20,000 card! Yes! And his growth was massively accelerated through being in some of the biggest Among Us lobbies, including playing with AOC. There we go. Okay, I have no more tasks. <gasps> It was, it, it was it him! And if that wasn't enough to make him one of Twitch's biggest names, he also made headlines that year by winning Pog Champs, the inaugural streamer chess tournament, and provided the world the greatest chess Twitch clip of all time when he beat XQC in eight moves. Well, that's gotta be a world record. Thanks for the fat 10 gift subs, Pikachu. My c is Throbbing, throbbing. What is XQC's chat saying right now? Moist was on top of the world. Five years ago, he was saying he wanted everyone to know his name. Now, he was a Twitch and YouTube superstar. Not only that, people listened to him because he had level-headed takes on the things that Twitch and YouTube fans cared about most. I see gambling's become kind of big these days. That's a little dangerous. I've never had a problem with it, but, uh. I see a lot of young people, not here, not necessarily here, but I was watching and it's, it seems a bit dangerous, uh, I think. When you see one of your favorite streamers get like a huge payday and you're like an impressionable 15, 16 year old. By 2021, Critical started paying it forward. He founded his own esports team. Why? Well. 
for fun. So if Cola does want to actually take the moist esports journey, I'm sure we could probably set him up with some sponsors to pay him to play and maybe we can grow Moist Esports into something more real. But for now, this really was something started just for some fun and to help Cola, who I think is a very deserving player, get into Summit and provide him with anything he would need to compete. So that's what it is for now. It's nothing super huge, but it is something that we are pretty passionate about turning into something kind of big at some point. Moist Esports signed Cola, a Smash Bros Ultimate player, then Hotashi from Guilty Gear Strive, then more Smashers, an Apex team, and an entire Rocket League squad. And they popped off. Cola! Ikea! Ikea! There's a guy Get out of H! Ah! Run! Get out of it! Another one! Any other any other one! Yes! Jezebel! Jezebel! Oh, a dash attack also good! Trying to find the KO! Here good grab! Good grab! Come on, Cola! Come on! I don't know if he should have it. Might be R it. Okay, the back KO! Go! Yes! Yes! Let's go! Yes! Oh my f***ing god, yes! Woo! Despite being one of the biggest names on the internet, Moist never lost sight of where he started. He kept fighting for the little guy and calling out bad actors whenever he saw them. This is a video I probably should have made two years ago, but the person it's about is a parasite who thrives off of attention and controversy. He himself comes forward and says he only does these things so people will make videos about him. And while he doesn't donate everything he earns to charity anymore, he's still doing his best to give back. In 2021, he held Cure Rare Disease's biggest charity stream ever. Moist Critical went from absolute rock bottom to the top of the world, and his community recognized him for that. In 2022, he won Best Variety Streamer at Cutie Cinderella Streamer Awards, powered both by fan votes and nods from his streaming peers. But of course, he accepted it in his own special way. Oh my god, I feel like I just pulled a PSA 10 first edition Charizard Baseless Shadowless while Belle Delphine was playing with my nipples and, and Nico Cotto Avocado was licking my asshole. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for this. I want to thank the Moist Critical team, Charlie, 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 and Charlie. But for all the ridiculous nonsense, that award did mean a lot to Moist. So winning this is super special to me. And it's especially shocking because I never even mentioned the award show on stream. I never told the community to go spam votes for me or anything like that. So the fact that I was able to squeak out a win there is shocking, like genuinely astonishing. He's in a band. He's made a comic book. He bought a theme park. Critical is living every 14 year old's dream. He's still ridiculous and crude and not for everyone. He still wears the same shirt every day and has all the vocal energy of a sleeping grandpa. But at the same time, he's one of the most honest, giving and undeniably authentic content creators out there. He's not doing it for the views or the money. He started a whole esports team for the same reason he started uploading videos and streaming, because he thought it would be fun, because he wanted to make every day as memorable as possible for himself and anyone else along for the ride. Ah, ah, that is very warm enough. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Holy f***ing right. Ah! I don't like that at all. <laughs> but he's also a new kind of internet content creator. He isn't above the drama, but he manages to avoid being drowned in it. He doesn't crush people at every game he plays. He's just a guy who loves games and lives the dream. He truly is the greatest something of all time. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's about it. So yeah. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.